the Honorable Member for Preston, Sackville, Jesse Cook. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. To speak today on C81, but before I do so, Mr. Speaker, I have to share with the House that my wife and I uh, last uh, Friday became grandparents for a third time <laughs> since I've been elected to the House of Commons. So I know my kids are working hard in Nova Scotia to populate the country, of course, and that's a very important. And so I want to thank, of course, my daughter Janelle and her husband, uh, Tr uh, Trevor, uh, to uh, have uh, their first baby girl named Emma Ruth uh, on last Friday. It was a, a quick delivery, only two hours and 15 minutes after water breaking, uh, which is un not necessarily normal on the first child, but uh, a great experience and, and <laughs> proud, again, to be a grandparent. Mr. Speaker, this uh, bill is extremely important to Canadians, an act to ensure that the barrier-free Canada is the first, and that's important to know, Mr. Speaker, is the first piece of legislation aimed at improving access for people with disabilities. So when I hear the Conservatives speak about, you know, it could have been better, it could be better, I ask a simple question, why didn't they do anything about it the last 10 years? They had 10 years to do something. We are bringing something extremely important to support our, our uh, all Canadians and those, of course, with disabilities. Our government has their backs, and this is an inclusive bill that brings fairness, which is extremely important for all Canadians. All Canadians will be much better in position to contribute and to succeed, and that's what our job is as, as a government. You know, uh, Mr. S uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, most Canadians sometimes in their lives will have uh, some disabilities. I mean, even today, if someone breaks his leg or an arm, uh, they have challenges. Sometimes you have to experience those to really understand. And in my speech today, I will talk about some uh, individuals and organizations in, in my riding of Sagra Preston Chesicook and, 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 and really bring this uh, very uh, personal but, but uh, very concrete and that's the objective that we want to do. Now people probably don't know but one out of every seven Canadian has some type of disabilities. That's almost, Mr. Speaker, almost 17, uh, 14, 15 percent of Canadians. So we're not talking about a few people. We're talking about many, many Canadians. We also have to recognize, Mr. Speaker, that in Canada, uh, especially Atlantic Canada, we have, uh, with the demographic, we have many, many more uh, seniors every day. I say that, Mr. Speaker, because in 2031, one quarter of all Canadians will be over 65 years old. That is a very, very big number. And of course, they will have challenges as well. So we need, we need to be there for them. Now, these uh, individuals with disabilities have a lot to offer to all Canadians. They have a lot to offer to the economy, Mr. Speaker. Only 50% of people with disabilities are working today. And many, many of them that are not working would like to work. The large majority of them would like to work, pay taxes, and contribute directly to our economy and to our great, our great country, Mr. Speaker which is extremely important. And in some areas, Mr. Speaker, uh, if you look at the, the uh, people with autism spectrum disorder or intellect, uh, intellectual, those individuals, the margin is even worse, Mr. Speaker. It's 80% of them that are not working. So we need to do something, and this legislation will help to ensure that more individuals will be able to contribute. The business community needs more people working in this country. And we can tap into this market, which is extremely important. Mr. Speaker, 
Uh, I want to share a story about a friend of mine. He happens to be the speaker of the legislature in Nova Scotia. His name, of course, is Mr. Murphy, Kevin Murphy. He's the speaker, and he's in a wheelchair, Mr. Speaker, because at a young age in high school, he had a hockey accident. And he's now in a wheelchair for life. And when that happened, Mr. Speaker, the school had to make some preparation. It was extremely difficult, as you can understand. This is about 30 years ago. We had no elevators. Problem, we got to bring everything down to him because we couldn't get him upstairs to the next floor. That's not having equal rights, Mr. Speaker. Going to the washroom very difficult as well. Having a desk. So those were situations that we were faced with. We need to make sure that the federal institution that we have those in place, Mr. Speaker. Now, he was lucky when he went and became Speaker of the House, there had been a Speaker before that had, that was, uh, had a wheelchair, of course, so they had all the preparation. He said to me, it was unbelievable. I thought I was going to have uh, many, many challenges and I was able to roll my wheelchair up. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Murphy is also a lead, a Canadian lead, on the uh, Commonwealth Parliamentary Subcommittee that works in, has a mandate in encouraging people with disabilities to offer their service to become public servants or to become politicians. And they also encourage them, of course, to be engaged in democracy, extremely important. I want to touch also, Mr. Speaker, on uh, uh, the, the uh, program that has been set up by the Canadian Autism Spectrum Alliance and the Canadian Association of uh, Community Living. And they have a program which is ready, willing, and able. And they have been working with the private sector to, to have them uh, and look at ways that they can hire more people with disabilities and support them and, and, and ensure uh, some skill uh, programming. And because of their work, over 2,000 people since, two th uh, since 2014, over 2,000 people are working that were not working before with disabilities. And in Nova Scotia, Mr. Speaker, 265 from Nova Scotia. That's about 12 percent, Mr. Speaker. So I want to thank them for their good work in their phase one project, and I know they've made application for phase two. Now, Mr. Speaker, I want to talk about building futures, employment society, right in my riding of Sackville, Preston, Chesico. This organization has four social enterprises that works with people with co cognitive challenges. And Mr. Speaker, I had the opportunity last month to visit. And I can tell you, impress is not the word. I was mesmerized by the work that these individuals are doing and the support that these individuals have through this society, uh, uh, Mr. Speaker. They have one, uh, four companies, four social enterprises, one, the Assembly Plus, it's been in place, existing, for over 30 years, Mr. Speaker. Pretty impressive. Over 30 years, where these individuals build, assembles, equipment, materials for companies. They're contributing directly. They get all kinds of contracts and do excellent work, Mr. Speaker. They also have uh, 30 years uh, future uh, copy printing shop and they've been doing printing and copying for individuals and for companies over 30 years Mr. Speaker impressive again very impressive and the two other companies one that was started uh, 2013 Future Birds uh, which is the custom artwork <coughs> that these individuals with disabilities are creating and these are being sold and again, contributing directly to society. And finally, the Future Cafe, where they have all kinds of different cooking uh, products, 
and of course, uh, coffee, tea, whatnot they serve. The four <coughs> enterprises, Mr. Speaker, contribute major contribution to the uh, Sackville region and the riding of Sackville, Preston, Jessica. <coughs> Last week, they had an auction, Mr. Speaker. They had over 200 people there for the auction supporting this, these organizations. That's the type of uh, organization that this bill will help to ensure more, more Canadians <coughs> with disability and challenges will have. This bill, Mr. Speaker, is also structured to ensure that the people with disabilities were involved. They were consulted, they were involved from day one, and they will continue to contribute through uh, the various, uh, for example, the Canadian Accessibility Standard Development. They have the majority stand there. Again, this is the type of bill, and it's a bill that answers to nothing about us without us. Extremely important. And our government is putting money forward, over $290 million over the next six years, to help ensure that we move forward in this project plan bill that is extremely important to all Canadians. And also, Mr. Speaker, every five years, there will be a review. That's making sure that we can fine-tune, we can make the adjustments that are necessary, that are important. That's what it's about. We also have to support the Minister, <coughs> uh, Independent Chief uh, Accessibility Officer, which will help review, uh, do the assessment, what not. And, oh, thank you. Mr. Speaker, my voice is going again. I apologize. But uh, as I continue on, Mr. Speaker, uh, as I was saying, the creation of a Canadian Accessibility Standard development is crucial. And these individuals are, have the majority, and they will be ensuring that these standards are set and that we continue to ensure that we're meeting those standards, which is extremely important. Mr. Speaker, also important is the the duties, if you want, of the bodies that are regular, the federal authorities. They have the responsibility to create their own plan. They have the responsibility of creating a plan. It's their plan, and therefore they will ensure greater success. They are engaged from day one, Mr. Speaker. So they're engaged in the consultation. They will be engaged in giving feedback which is crucial, of course. And they will be engaged in ensuring that the, they can share the successes and what is working and what is not working so well and how we can make it better, Mr. Speaker. In closing, Mr. Speaker, I want to uh, share a quote uh, from uh, Raymond Chen, the Dean of the School of Continuing Education <coughs> from Ryerson University. Without a doubt, I believe that the accessible the uh, Canada Act presents excellent potential for economic growth, as I spoke of throughout my speech, Mr. Speaker. <coughs> All Canadians will benefit when the accessibility legislation is properly implemented and enforced. Furthermore, it is a great opportunity for us to emphasize the best attributes of this great country. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Bravo. Merci.